One refrain that I frequently hear everywhere I go in Washington State is people say they just want to have good people involved in local politics. They don't want career politicians. They want people who are willing to get down and do the hard, difficult work to make the world a better place. And I've traveled a lot around the state, and people who are engaged in the political process frequently tell me this. Now, to me, David Medor is the person who personifies exactly the kind of person who we want involved in local politics. A successful businessman who founded and owns U.S. Digital, providing a living for over 100 local families, David is serious about supporting small local charities and has created a program which provides the resources to ensure 35 local charities can thrive in their mission to help others. Finally, David is someone who cares enough to stand up to strong, powerful political forces despite the personal attacks and harassment, and who maintains a positive, energetic demeanor throughout. I originally met David Medor in 2011 because of his willingness to get involved in a variety of local political issues. Like many of us who care about the political process and local government, he became concerned about an issue that he thought would impact his community, Clark County, which is located in Washington State. Specifically, he became concerned that a local mega project called the Columbia River Crossing, or CRC for short, would introduce expensive bridge tolls for daily commuters. He also became concerned with the ever-escalating costs and questionable political maneuvering to grease the skids for light rail included in this project. David originally approached council members at the Vancouver City Council, and he experienced the treatment that many of us have unfortunately experienced in the past. This city council is stating that you have no say, you have no influence, you cannot change what is on the track to happen here, which is the biggest project in the history of our city. Now we are in a very deep recession. Uh, stores have closed, businesses have gone out, and people are hurting. Our employment is very high, and the, what tolls would do on top of that would be very hurtful. What, one thing we can do to minimize the possibility of tolls and to minimize the tolls would be to do whatever we can to trim the pork out of this. This very large parking structure here, a very large parking structure here, yep. uh, and all of this light rail area here. David, please summarize. That's a good presentation. It really should be made to the project sponsors council at CRC. Um, and, and I personally don't think it's appropriate for citizens communications. So there's no way I'm going to support a project that just does all the improvements south of the river. So. Well, I, I understand that, sir. Oh, I just... You're done. You're done. Thank you for coming. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Medor. I didn't get the memo that we no longer can speak about light rail and tolls. Okay, you're Gene leaving. Harris, you are Gavel a very down. disgraceful Gavel person down. tonight. Gavel him down. down. I can't Gavel believe him down. Gavel down. Out. You've been dismissed. And thus began his exposure to the challenges that face every concerned citizen who attempts to engage City Hall. Now, many of us would go home and be frustrated by the stonewalling and unwillingness of politicians and bureaucrats to listen. However, David fully engaged. He hired a forensic accountant who specialized in fraud investigation to follow the money on the CRC project. He started a local group called No Tolls. He discovered that the local media was unwilling to expose certain aspects of this project and they had no interest in being fair-minded or looking at the downsides, particularly the light rail elements of this massive project. David hired and developed his own media team to expose the truth. This included using creative ways to visually represent the bloated budget and public forums to expose the truth, and videos showing politicians changing their stories after they won their elections. Finally, after years of working to communicate his concerns to elected officials and citizens, David decided to run for political office himself. He succeeded in being elected as one of the Clark County Commissioners in 2012 by replacing a longtime politician who would not listen. Like most newcomers to the political process, David has had his fair share of political mistakes. Now, despite these setbacks, and the aggressive attacks directed at him, he focused on doing the best job he could as commissioner and now as county councilman. 
In just two years, he led the charge to attract new businesses to Clark County by eliminating much of the red tape and nearly all the fees imposed on businesses attempting to build new facilities in the county. He removed parking fees at local parks and found many opportunities to streamline county government and reduce operating costs. He launched an innovative and unique approach to zoning, which has made Clark County the least controversial zoning process I've ever seen in Washington State. Not surprisingly, the unemployment rate has dropped significantly in Clark County, and businesses are locating and expanding here. Now, as for that flawed CRC project that originally inspired David to become so involved in local politics, it eventually collapsed due to, in large part to David Medor. And local politicians have noticed this impact. David inspired a whole lot of people to get involved, and that's what finally killed the CRC project. Now, David isn't perfect. None of us are. Perfection's impossible in the political process. However, the only people who don't make some mistakes are the people who don't even try. And I wanted to tell David's story because there are people who live in our communities, our neighbors, our friends, and maybe even you, who can make a real difference where you live. Now, not all of us can be as impactful as David, but it is likely that we can accomplish more than we are doing right now. But it starts with being willing to engage, expose the truth, and not giving up when we don't win the first time. I hope David's story has inspired you as much as it has inspired me. And if you are inspired by this video series, please share them with others so that they can be inspired as well. We want to encourage more people to be involved and engaged in the political process to make a difference in their community, just like David Medora.